So I just went up in our reserve and uh, I got dust on the bottle, which is kind of cool. It's Always like a, a good sign. It's like a cellar, except we don't really have an underground cellar for, uh, for this unless you're in our tasting rooms. But I wanted to try uh, one of the older things that we've got in our reserve collection and just kind of see how things are aging. It's always interesting. This is um, Aphrodisia Batch 10, and we made this with Cabernet grapes and Arizona wildflower honey. And this was in, for, for about a year, um, uh, a barrel that we got from the brewery, and it was a, a Black Tuesday, like incredible stout. I'm sure you've had that. Oh yeah. And, and the particular uh, Black Tuesday variant was out of a Madeira barrel. Ooh. And so we entered this, I thought it was like one of the best things we'd ever made. We entered it in the Piment category at the Mazer Cup, just as you know, the biggest, you know, mead competition in the world. Won a silver medal, and then we entered the same batch a year later and won a gold medal. Nice. So that kind of put aphrodisia on the map of, you know, the 10 people that know what the word Piment means. But <laughs> I love it. It's one of my favorite styles of mead for sure, because I've, I'm, as soon as I tried port for the first time, I was like, this is great. I wonder if we can do stuff like this. And so this is kind of, you know, our version of that in a way, especially when we get into the spirit barrel variants oh, of yeah. this. A but fitting this, drink for the day too, since we just bought all the grapes for this year's. Right on, yeah, so what we do with, with honey, we can get honey year round, which is kind of cool, but they're definitely products that they're seasonal by nature. And so we have all of our aphrodisia grapes coming in from California in September, because that's the time of year that everything gets ripe and sweet and ready to pick. Well, let me pour for you first. Thank you. And I can see the color right away is showing some, a little bit of oxidation from, from time. Oh, I can smell that from here. And you know, the Black Ooh. Tuesday is just so, I, I think we're gonna have a little bit of chocolate. Let's see. You can smell it. Cheers. Salud. So we made this in 2013. We, we packaged it in 2014. So this has been in a bottle for seven years, but it started, it was born eight years ago from grapes grown in 2013. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's holding up great too. You still get this stout, really nice, pretty forward notes of chocolate. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is delicious. Yeah. It's so nice that things are holding up. And you know, we keep, we're, we're constantly evolving, you know, how we make things and and learning because we're pushing the envelope of what you can do with, with mead and, and ingredients and our processes. And it's kind of neat to know that even back in 2013, we were doing something right. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like chocolate covered blackberries. Nice work. I totally get that. Delicious. You said this was Cabernet? Yep. Mm. Yeah. It's so savory. And, you know, always, I always think one of the good definitive characteristics of something that's, you know, good or great is when the flavor just keeps going. And after I take a sip, you get that, that alcohol. So you know that, you know, what you're drinking something that it's got alcohol in it, but it's so pleasant. And it, it, for me, it like the sweetness kind of like it lingers a little bit, but that alcohol is a really nice balance to it. It is. It doesn't linger too long. It's got just a little bit of acid carrying over still too. It like really keeps it, still feels fresh. Like it doesn't taste old at all. It's, I, I mean, I hoped it was gonna taste this good, but it, it's actually, you know, I didn't expect it to be as good as it actually is. This is awesome. Yeah. It's crazy, you can even get the beer. I mean, like, that's probably one of my favorite Black Tuesday variants and you get distinctive notes of it. For me, it starts in the very beginning of the, the palate. I, I'm just, it's stout. Like, yeah. And I can like separate in my mind and you know, that flavor of stout and a big stout. And then I start to realize real quick, hey, there's a little bit of honey. There's definitely, you know, the vinous notes from the cab. Yeah, I love it. All that dark fruit just packed in under those layers of chocolate. Yeah, and the, and the barrel, like I remember pulling a nail from this and this barrel was in, before we had this building, I, I still can picture it in the top right stack um, of what's now like, you know, kind of our, was our merch room and it's now like our back room or whatever down in uh, our Prescott tasting room. And, uh, and trying and just be like, man, this is awesome. And getting the stout and a little bit of wood, it's kind of like, I can't quite get smoke, you know, that, but I get like, yeah. I can get a little oak and a little roast in there from the, from the wood as well. Yeah, just a touch. I mean, it's got some of those like vanilla coconut notes from that. 
It's not overwhelming, but it's there. Well, that is standing up amazingly well. Man, this label's a trip. <laughs> so that's before Talk we had a, a trip back in time. A graphic designer, yeah. <laughs> I used to, you know, I didn't know, you know, I'm not an artist by any stretch, but I would just take our, yeah, the old, old OG bull and just throw it on there. I'm like, well, I can change the font and make things, you know, positioned in the right way. But yeah, no kidding. Gets the and, job done. And uh, I think there's maybe four bottles of this left in our reserve, um, which is always like, you know, pulls at your heartstrings to crack it. But at the same time, you've got to do this from time to time or, you know, you don't know where you stand. Yeah. And, and we've got, we made 275 bottles of this, which is kind of cool. That's the, also a trip. <laughs> yeah. And then that was like- batches these days. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this is great. Wow, what would you want to eat with this? Mm. Off the bat, like a nice filet would be good. Yeah. I was just checking my email and my friend Chrissy that wrote the meat and food pairing book, I'm on her email list because she has, most of her business is really a farm and they raise all kinds of animals and stuff. And there's a picture of, I, I look like tri-tip, sliced like roast beef and it was all like super crusty and there was a, an article about the Maillard reaction and mm -hmm. cooking and, and I was like just thinking about that as I was sipping on this, like a really nice smoky tri-tip would be killer. Or even like a, um like a dry rub piece of brisket. You get the burn ends with this. Dude, burn ends. I think you nailed it. Man, that's Would good. Would definitely go well with your peach cobbler after your barbecue too. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's what, eight years old? Pretty crazy. <laughs>